So in this video we're going to take a look at uh, Guthrie Oven's secret string skip system or not so secret as the case may be because he is pretty good at sharing his tips and tricks but I like the alliteration so that's why it's there. <laughs> There's a few different ways to tackle these licks uh, so I'll just go through the first example and talk about them and just mention the way that I'm going to do it. Um, before we start it's maybe worthwhile noting that if you have a compressor that will help you get things more even you know in an ideal world you want to be able to do it without the use of the compressor but you know to get you started or to keep the consistency up it's not a bad idea. So this first one here what we're doing is all these examples are going to be in C sharp minor and I'll link to a back and track in the description or I'll try and pop a video up around here you can click on that if you want something a bit more rhythmic uh, to play along. So this first one uh, we've got the 7th fret on the low E and then you just hammer on, hammering on to the 9, hammer on to the 12. So on the first string we've got this. And the cool thing about this system is we can just use the same shape and move it. So what we do is in effect just bump it up an octave. So I'm starting on the 9th fret on the D, hammer on to 11, and then what I do is hammer on from there to the 14. So I'm just picking once on each string just now and I'm going like this. Right. The next thing, instead of moving the octave up here, what we do is we just move it to here and we get to use the exact same shape again, because this is what we used on the E string. So you get 7, up to 9, up to 12. At this point you can hit the 12 uh, to do the pull-offs and come back down, but I tend to just hit it once, so I'd do this. But you could go... It depends what you prefer. So we'll recap that from the start, we've got this. Right, now we're doing the same thing on the D string but going back down, so we've got this 14 down to 11 down to 9, and then down on the low E string 12 to 9 to 7. So what I was mentioned before, there's a few different ways you could do it. You could do it all legato, and give this a go, I don't know how clean it'll be, uh, so you'd hammer on from nowhere, so I'm not going to pick it at all. So that was pretty weak, so if I was wanting to do that uh, with any regularity I'd have to work and I'd get my finger strength up. Uh, you can pick every note, but that seems a bit excessive. Uh, picking every string once is what I'm probably going to go for. The other cool thing that you can do is you can do a bit of hybrid picking. So you can pick this string normally, pick this one normally, then instead of picking the high E just take your middle finger and just play the string with that. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to move your right hand too much, so we'll do a quick example. So this gets to stay relatively still, which is kind of useful sometimes if this hand's jumping all about the place. This next example we're going to tap a note, and this is the fifth of the chord, so what we're going to have is a full arpeggio of the C sharp minor 7, but starting on the flat 7. Uh, with this example, like I've done with the other ones, what I'm doing is trying to keep it in sort of a 1 bar phrase so it's kind of useful to you musically. So with this one what we're doing is it's the exact same thing but we're just going to be tapping on an extra note here. Uh, it's worth mentioning so you don't have to hammer on from nowhere you can actually you know you can either play the first note so I'm just picking it there or what I sometimes do if I'm tapping is I just flick it. So I'm not tapping there what I'm doing is flicking the string almost like a pull off but with my right hand just to get a bit more strength on that first note. But you can just hammer on from nowhere. On a side note, if you want to check out uh, hammering on from nowhere as a technique, if you look at some Greg Howe videos, in particular his song Kick It All Over, it's really worthwhile looking at. Anyway, back on topic. So we're tapping the fifth of the chord here. So we're doing this exactly the same as before, 7, 9, 12. Then we're going to tap the 16th fret. And then the same system. So what we're doing is jumping over to the D string, and we're going to go 9, 11, 14. And then tap 18. So that's an octave up from here, right? Then, you know, same shape that we had on the low E string, on the high E string. So we got the 7, 9, 12, 16. So, so far we've got this. And to finish this off, what we're doing is coming back down on the, well, first of all, the E string. So just to pull off as before, you know, we're just tapping this note. Then we're going down to the D string on that 18th fret, and we're just doing the same shape we did before, but going down. And that'll wrap you up to one bar, so I'll run through that one from the start. <laughs> the 
This next one has got an odd grouping of notes to make things a little bit more interesting. It's the same shape that we just looked at, but we're playing it slightly differently. So it'll be seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same thing on the next string. And on the next one. I'll play that one all the way through slowly. You might notice there what I did on the E string was I did my little flick trick as well because I realised I wasn't going to hit the string with enough strength. It's good to be able to do these things on the fly as well if you want to. This next one is the exact same shape as before but we're doing groups of 6 rather than 7 and starting with the tap. So we've got the 16th fret, pull off to 12, pull off to 9, pull off to 7, hammer on to 9, hammer on to 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Exactly the same idea on the D string. And then up on the E as well. And you go back to the D to finish it off. So give that a go, playing it all the way through. Managed to hit a harmonic on that note there accidentally. Couldn't have done that if I tried. Uh, should have sounded like this. The next one is another group of six, and it's very similar, except we're doing this pattern. Uh, so you tap in on the 16th fret, and it's going straight off to the 7th. Then we're doing some left hand legato. 9, 12, 9, 7. So still six. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right. And that just repeats in the strings, the same shape as before, in the same way. So we'll go through that. We'd have. This next one, what I'm going to do is miss out the 7th, uh, so this would work over a C sharp minor chord, it would work over a minor 7 as well. Uh, and what we're doing is we're just hammering on from 9 to 12, right, and then tapping on the 16. So we just got the triad, the 1, the flat 3, and then the 5, but the 5's up here. And that just goes across the strings, so we've got this. Cool, so to change things up a bit and show you how you can use this uh, across the board a bit more, I'm still going to play in the key of C sharp minor, but what I'm going to do is play an E major arpeggio, so the relative major here. Which, interestingly enough, would imply the uh, C sharp minor 7. So what we're... sorry, I can't, I can't help myself with the theory, I can't help it, it just, this just excites me. It's more exciting than this. And that's pretty exciting. <laughs> Oh dear. Right, anyway, let's get on with it. So what we're doing is we're starting on the 12th fret now because it's a slightly different shape. And this is just to show you how you can apply this to different arpeggios and different things like that, okay? We're using the same same strings of the system. So we've got the 12th fret and we're hammering on to 16. And then we want to go up to the 5th, so what we're going to do is tap it here. So that's the 19th fret. And as I say, this is an E major arpeggio. So we're playing 12, hammer on to 16, and then tap 19. Now you take this shape and just bunk up the octave like we did before. So we got 14 to 16, and then we're up to what, be 21. And then again, we can just move the shape to here to mirror the E string we had on the bottom. So we've got the 12, 16, up to 19. And then just pull off down the same way. So I'm pulling off the 19, down to the 16, down to the 12. Then we've got the 21, hammering, uh, sorry, tapping that, pulling off down to the next one, and then down to the 14 there. So it's going 21, 18, 14 there for that string. And then you're back down to this string, so you want to do the, seven, the 19, sorry, down to the 16, down to 12. And I'll just run through that in a one So we've got. As always, I hope that's been of some use to you guys. I want to do that major one at the end just to show how you can apply the exact same system to different things and still get a pretty cool result. If you enjoy the content of this channel, please feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined. It is very much appreciated. Cheers!